Outside of the new colonization that is going on in Africa, there is something else that we need to pay real attention to. It is the colonization of our indigenous seeds and our organic food system by the corporate pseudo farmers and agents of globalization. Today I want to come with a very important message to you as Africans. So recently we saw the Kenyan kids protesting the increasing of taxes in order to pay the IMF. And these kids were mad because they're saying that they cannot survive, their parents cannot survive, and that's why they want to fight these taxes. They fought so vociferously, they risked their lives, sacrificed their lives, they even got killed in order to reduce these taxes because they want more paper money in their hands. But what I want you to understand is that they were vociferous on an issue to do with paper money, but they forgot the most important thing just six months ago when the government introduced GMOs into the country. Now you need to understand that yes, the tax issue is a problem. For a country to be milking its people in order to pay the IMF, that's slavery. But trust me, that is not compared to what it is that the issue of seeds is. This resource, seeds, is the most important resource in the world. There are lots of questions that need answers in this our world that is blindfolded with too many layers of agendas and outright propagandas. Questions like, who made Bill Gates the Global Minister for Agriculture and Reproductive Health? How did agriculture become the culture of death? through chemical poisoning of humans and the environment, rather than the culture of life through natural organic nutrition, care for the environment and respect for biodiversity. Is the green revolution really about green life and the revolution of our minds toward better engagement with nature and biodiversity, or is it just another code word for depopulation and human control projects? Why are the people of the world being gradually manipulated to eat just maize, rice, wheat, and potatoes? What happened to the diversity of food and the diversity of nutrition that nature provides in abundance? What's really the plan? Always ask the questions. Pay close attention to half stories. Stereotype. Why spread the lies or why try and sow those seeds of doubt? Become the person that goes on the hunt for truth. My name is Dr. Vandana Shiva. I've trained in quantum theory, but I have spent the last 40 years of my life trying to understand food. Food is the most vital aspect of life. We are connected to the soil, to the plants, through the flow of nutrition. That is the food cycle. The more food we give to the soil, the more food the soil gives us because the soil is a very rich ecosystem of diversity of bacteria, fungi, anthropods, earthworms, and they are the makers of food. When they make food, our plants are healthy. When we eat healthy plants, we are healthy. The interconnection between the food for the soil and the food for human beings comes through diversity. Agriculture means the care for the land. That is why agriculture has lasted thousands of years. Australian Aboriginal people have farmed for 10, 60,000 years. India's farming is more than 10,000 years old. In the Amazon, indigenous people have farmed for thousands of years. And the land never got degraded, it was always regenerated. present time we have two models of agriculture. One is an ancient constantly evolving ecological system 
called agroecology, called organic farming, natural farming, permaculture, biodynamic. It has many names. This is the agriculture that works with the earth and her laws. And it also ensures that good food is provided to people. This agriculture is practiced on a small scale because it's practiced with love and care. Agriculture means the care of the land and you can only give care in an intimate level. There is another system that is called industrial agriculture, but it is not agriculture at all because it is not involved in care for the earth. And this agriculture has driven species to extinction. It has led to climate change. I would call only the ecology of agriculture and the care of agriculture a true agriculture. The industrial system is a war and it has in short 70 years taken away the earth's vibrant biodiversity. It's destroyed the food web and the web of life and it has created hunger on a very large scale. How can a plant which cannot reproduce itself produce nutrition, health and life in humans? You think about it. Also, how can a seed which cannot reproduce itself be the replacement to indigenous seeds that have been tried and tested by indigenous farmers for thousands of years? It just does not make any sense. Natural law says that life must give birth to life, and seeds are the proof of that life. Today I want to come with a very important message to you as Africans. So recently we saw the Kenyan kids protesting the increasing of taxes in order to pay the IMF. And these kids were mad because they're saying that they cannot survive, their parents cannot survive, and that's why they want to fight these taxes. They fought so vociferously, they risked their lives, sacrificed their lives, they even got killed in order to reduce these taxes because they want more paper money in their hands. Now, trust me, I've been to Kenya, I've been to Dandora, I've been to uh, 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 Kibira. I have seen the slums and how most people in Kenya live. But what I want you to understand is that they were vociferous on an issue to do with paper money, but they forgot the most important thing just six months ago when the government introduced GMOs into the country. Now, you need to understand that, yes, the tax issue is a problem. For a country to be milking its people in order to pay the IMF, that's slavery. But trust me, that is not compared to what it is that the issue of seeds is. This resource, seeds, is the most important resource in the world. It is the most important resource to humanity, animals, and life. Water Food are the most important things because when you have those, you can survive. But what happened to in Kenya six months ago is they allowed the introduction of genetically modified seeds for cotton and maize. What the Kenyan people and these Kenyan youth did not understand is that their government had just signed them into food slavery and into death. They also didn't understand that the government had signed them up for a biological warfare together with a chemical warfare because the chemicals that go with these GMOs are ones that cause cancer. And if you look at the cancer index, the countries with the highest cancer rate and the highest cancer death rate in Africa, Kenya comes number four after Zimbabwe that eats GMOs from South Africa, that are laced with glyphosate, that goes hand in hand with the GMOs. Second is South Africa, followed by Malawi, and then Kenya. I have actually ignored the Union Republic that comes tops, but, but their death rate is lower than the four countries that are spoken about. Now, the Union, Reunion Republic, you know who colonized the Union, Reunion Republic. Those people kill Africans. You know this. So, the fact that the Kenyan children did not find it important to rise up when they were being put into food slavery by GMOs, that when you planted this season, 
you cannot replant it next season because it has a genetic use restriction technology. And when we were listening to the Kenyans trying to convince young Kenyans, as Kenyan scientists, Kenyan business people and government officials, they said that there is nothing called genetic use restriction technology. They were lying. I am currently undertaking a court case in South Africa against a company called Insco that also is present in Kenya as a fast food outlet called Simbisa Brands that has got chicken in, creamy in, bakers in. That company, I took their food for tests here in South Africa together with uh, uh, France and Italy and their food and GMOs came up positive for the NOS Terminator gene. So the Kenyan scientists were lying to Kenyans when they said that the seeds will not terminate, will not become sterile and people in Kenya will be able to regrow these GMOs. It was a lie. And I'm saying so you African children in Kenya in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, wherever you are, if you're not worried about your seeds, if you're not worried about how you're going to produce food tomorrow, what happens when you become captives of the companies like Monsanto, Bayer Monsanto, Saigenta, uh, DuPont, when they stop giving your country seeds as they stopped giving parts uh, 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 and, and loans to Zimbabwe during sanctions? What will you do? What will you do in South Africa right now if the South African government had not gone into a GNU with the DA and the Americans decided to put them under sanctions? Where would they get seeds when 90% of their food is produced by GMOs and seeds that are owned by Monsanto and other biotech companies from America? Besides that, these GMOs are known to be engineered to actually have ethnic diseases. Hence, you will see that there's a current study in America that was talking about the increase of diseases with the use of GMOs and glyphosate. They say that there's an increase in every single chronic disease ever since they introduced GMOs and glyphosate. This is scientific evidence that these GMOs are dangerous. Now, I am fighting, like I said, in court in South Africa. This company called Insco, owned by a Greek gentleman in Zimbabwe, came to South African courts to try and shut me up through the courts. They left Zimbabwean courts where they are selling the illegal GMOs. It's illegal to sell GMOs in Zimbabwe without government approval. They're selling these GMOs that are filled with glyphosate, came to South African courts. They know they're breaking the law in Zimbabwe and they tried to use the South African courts to silence me. But why did they come to the South African courts? They believe that because the South African courts are manned by white people, the white people who have a vested interest to shut me up so that we as Africans can again be put under food slavery. The same thing you're fighting again. You're fighting against debt slavery, but debt slavery is nothing compared to food slavery. And when they came to the South African courts, we have been able to stop them from shutting me up, from whistleblowing. But while I'm fighting them, the lawyers that I was using were approached. My first lawyer, my first advocate was approached and he began to give evidence against me to this big company because this company is huge. Not only that, they have now gone to my second set of lawyers who were Edward Nathan Sonnenbergs and they have presented, they got a group of women to present something that I said on, uh, they said I said on social media and then that was the reason why this company called Edward Nathan Sonnenbergs has withdrawn its service from me. What I said was not illegal. It should be protected by free speech. But remember, Edward Nathan Sonnenbergs and most of the law firms in this country are not African. They are not here to serve our interests. So they would s deny me services, legal services, yet they represent EOH. EOH is a company that was implicated in state capture and getting billions out of uh, 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 some of the shady deals that happened there and they ended up paying a penalty. They represent people that were involved in Marikana, people who were involved in the deaths of people during Marikana. They represent those. They represent South African banks that deny and discriminate against black people and actually do not give them loans at the same price as white people. This law firm has got no problem representing those people. Apartheid criminals have representation in South Africa, but they will cancel me for an allegation that I said something distasteful, not illegal, on social media. This goes to show you that this fight we're fighting is not our fight. I mean, this goes to show you that this fight that we're fighting 
is a very big fight and we're all on our own the other races are united in our destruction the other races don't care this is why this law firm would deny me services to actually stop a company from feeding zimbabweans illegal gmos and causing the pandemic of cancer that is in zimbabwe they will go and take sides with that company instead of protecting the women and children and it is women who are the biggest victims of these GMOs in Zimbabwe. They're the ones dying from cervical cancer. They're the ones that are dying from uh, uh, breast cancer and other cancers. And this company let me go on the threat by a Twitter women's group that said that they will protest if they did not stop giving me services. It's clear that the company that I'm fighting that wants to continue to have the right to sell illegal GMOs and toxic foods to our people. It's a biological, chemical, and economic war and you as Africans have got to start thinking about it and I challenge you in South Africa people like EFF you want land but the land is being poisoned by chemicals that need to grow with these GMOs these GMOs are not natural they grow with chemicals because they're not adapted to the soils they're not adapted to the environment and so therefore your soils are being destroyed the bacteria in the soil is dying the worms that are in the soil are being killed you depend on fertilizers the more fertilizers you put the more it kills your soil the more it poisons your water the two essential things that you need for life water and seeds are being destroyed and then one day you get the land the water is toxic the land is toxic and it cannot grow anything because it has no living organisms in it anymore and then you don't have the seeds What's the point of taking land when you don't have seeds? These are things we need to grasp ourselves with now. Otherwise, you are running the risk of doing exactly what our ancestors did when they sold their enemies into slavery, not realizing that by selling your soldiers of your enemies, the soldiers of your people, into slavery, one day you'll be so weak that you can be colonized and enslaved on your own continent. We're repeating that. And many of you hear me talking about these seeds you don't care. This is millet. These are the most valuable resources, more valuable than gold and diamonds, more valuable than platinum, more valuable than iridium, is these seeds. Because with this you can feed yourself. Even if you don't have a job, even if you don't have money in your pocket, if you've got seed to put in the soil and harvest, you have food. If you've got clean water, you'll have water to drink, you will live, you will survive. Even if you don't have shelter, water and food are the only things you need for humanity. Not paper money. And these seeds, these are millet seeds traditional grasses that we used to grow back in the days. These now you're hearing Bill Gates is starting to look at millets, wants to turn them into GMOs and wants to turn them into hybrids. These were the seeds that kept our ancestors and gave them health. Their immunity was the strongest immunity. That's why we as Africans were taken as slaves because we were so strong. Now we are destroying these foods that we were supposed to be eating. We are allowing Bill Gates to come onto our continent and to destroy them. And we're not protecting them. And our leaders have become sellouts. They are the ones allowing these GMOs and hybrids so that they make their citizens captives of receiving seeds every single month. But what our leaders are doing is exactly like what our ancestors did, is to sell our own people into slavery. But let me tell you, the moment you don't have any more seeds on your continent, you'll be like Europe where tomato seeds now cost 60,000 US dollars for a kg, up to 400,000 US dollars for a kg. They allowed that to happen by allowing hybridization of their seeds, but they've got money, they've stolen from Africa so they can afford it. But can you in Africa afford seeds that cost more than a kg of gold? This is the most important resource and every government should make this a priority to look after these things, particularly the traditional ones. Mung beans, another tradition from Africa, all these beans, this is what we used to eat. And I want to challenge you, Africans, to say stop protesting over stupid things. And stop following these Gucci revolutionaries who don't understand what you need to do to survive for your tomorrow. Now, hashtag no to GMOs. Hashtag David versus Goliath. For those of you who want to follow my fight against INSCO, it's INSCO versus Rutendo. Let's unite, let's fight these GMOs for our survival.
the FDA has allowed for foods that are GMO to be labeled organic. It tells you that it is a GMO product, genetically modified organism. And why do we want to stay away from GMO foods? Because it's synthetic. The body can't recognize it. So it wrecks havoc in the body. Think about it. They're grapes. Grapes grow with seeds. Mm-hmm. But now you can buy organic grapes Without that seeds. don't have seeds. There is no <laughs> food that is seedless naturally. What are preservatives and why aren't they good? Well, many of them stay in our bodies five years, seven years, ten years, and they form as free radicals. You know, the body can't digest them. They don't know what it is. And free radicals eventually come together and clog arteries or turn into disease. I don't tell people that, oh, you're going to die if you eat that. I don't say that to you. I encourage you to do your own research, okay? Because there are a lot of foods that are GMO that are not labeled GMO. Mm -hmm. So you don't even know, right? okay? Because the FDA so conveniently made it so that these manufacturers don't have to label it anymore. They used to have to, but they don't now. Industrial agriculture began in the northern western industrialized countries where the chemicals used in war were then transferred into agrochemicals. After the wars, they tried to shift some of the chemicals to the third world in the name of the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution was a clear design to sell chemicals, but only those who were designing the Green Revolution knew this, people like Norman Bollock. For the governments, it was a new technology to grow more food. For policymakers, they thought this would be successful. They were not looking at its ecological impact. They were not looking at its hunger impact. They were not looking at the impact on farmers. They were just looking at how much wheat and rice comes to the market. Where do the chemicals come from? What are the chemical fertilizers? The same process that made explosives during the war are are chemicals that are used for chemical fertilizers. It's called the Haber-Bosch process. We take atmospheric nitrogen, burn fossil fuels at very, very, very high temperatures. And that then fixes the atmospheric nitrogen to make it ammonia product. The second class of chemicals we use in agriculture, industrial agriculture, are pesticides, insecticides. Their origins come from Hitler's labs. Chemicals made to kill people in concentration camps are the same chemicals that are being used now. Of course they've multiplied, but they have not worked to do the job they were meant to do. Instead of controlling pests, they have created more pests. Finally, a group of chemicals called herbicides. They kill plants, which are the very basis of food. Chemicals like Roundup, chemicals like Agent Orange. These are causing huge devastation of the Earth's biodiversity. But more importantly, they are also causing huge destruction of our health. The Green Revolution is not green and it is not revolutionary because revolutions become from the base. This was not chosen by the farmers, it was imposed on them. In 1965, the first experiment with the Green Revolution was made in the state of Punjab in India. The Green Revolution destroyed the richest state of India, the state of Punjab. Punjab's rivers, 
were killed, the soil was killed, farmers got into debt. In fact, it is the reason that I look at agriculture because 1984, Punjab farmers rose in revolt. That same year, the city of Bhopal had a disaster because a pesticide plant leaked. thousand people were killed in Punjab. Thousands are still dying in the city of Bhopal. The Green Revolution is now being taken to Africa in the name of the Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa. And the African farmers are also rejecting it because it means higher costs for higher inputs more destruction of resources, more use of land, more use of water, and a desertification of the system because nothing is going back to the soil in terms of food for the soil.